policy governance. And so I've written on and I've participated in discussions of uh, municipal consolidation, fragmentation. And just as a personal note, I have lived under various regimes of you know, different governance types, and I've been a first hand observer of them. Uh, to put the St. Louis region in context and the state of Missouri in context, it's a home rule state. Uh, a lot of the states in the Northeast and the Midwest are home rule states, meaning that the localities have a right of self governance and uh, capacity for self governance. The opposite of that is what's called the Dillon rule state which is the state retains the powers otherwise specified and allocated to the locality. And that's typical in the West and the South. Uh, so I was born in New York, uh, which is an early case of municipal consolidation, by the way. That happened still long, we had to combine with Brooklyn and Queens and all those other places. Grew up in a county in New Jersey called Burton County, which is northeast of New York, right over the George Washington Bridge, into that part of the world. 71 separate municipalities, about 800, 900,000 residents, the biggest city in New Jersey. And there was one city that had only eight people in it, Peterborough, which was an airport and some industrial facilities. The joke was, you know, there, they had a billions in tax capacity in this one municipality and that their students could be brought to the school by limousine and they contracted it from other, from other cities. And in the case of Earth Kent, literally the entire, everything was separate. Separate mayor, separate school district, separate service, separate police separate fire, uh, and a replication of government services, so much that the state of New Jersey uh, sought reform in the last several years and was looking at ways of below a certain municipal threshold requiring that for the state share of money that, you know, kind of carrot and stick approach, you know, it, it was an incentive to, to receive a bonus from, from the state government for consolidation because of the cost savings. It was a you know, a kind of stick if you didn't because there was a subtraction from the state resource. It's been a tough road. It's hard to tell places that have had autonomous existence to join, for instance. Uh, I also lived for a long time in Fairfax County, Virginia, which interestingly enough is almost the same size uh, county as Burton County, New Jersey, the whole affluent city, uh, counties that are mostly suburban and are approximate to large cities like Washington, New York. In the case of Fairfax County, it was one county government one school system, uh, one administration. Everything was unincorporated, actually. There was no incorporated space, except for an occasional incorporated carve out like uh, Falls Church, Virginia. Uh, and it was efficiently administered in that it was a single entity. I think there are challenges of whether or not that's close enough to represent the interests of an individual neighborhood and so on. And now I'm in Clark County, Nevada, uh, which is a single unified school district, the fifth largest in the U.S. Uh, and so I've seen sort of where I grew up, where I went to school, where my kids have gone to school. You know, I've seen I've seen variation in this. And again, a lot of this is just the habits of a region. A lot of this is the uh, you know, sort of history of the state where it was settled. You know, what, what sort of challenges it faced at the time of settlement, what were the key issues that ended up being incorporated into city charters, what got incorporated into state constitutions, and so on. So there's a lot of ways that. I'm also somebody who's been a uh, witness to some of the consolidation efforts like Louisville recently. Uh, you know, Louis Pudnut uh, was a, a fellow of the Urban Land Institute for a while, for about several years back. And he's at the Urban Land Institute. Of course, he's the mayor of uh, Indianapolis. He's famous for having stewarded the uh, consolidation of Indianapolis County. You know, he tells many tales off of that lesson. Uh, you know, positive and negative. So I have seen some of, you know, the context of this around the country. Uh, and a couple of quick observations that are, <coughs> for starts, that before you see the consolidation there, you have a robust regional conversation and engagement going on. So these things tend to be organic. The problem with New Jersey was that there was a proud tradition of separateness among small civil divisions within the state, and there wasn't an organic discussion, except that the state legislature were trying to save some state resources by reducing the share that went to places that replicated government and then reduced an inefficiency that had to be compensated for by state investment. Outside of that concern in the state legislature, there did not appear to be an organic discussion uh, around commonality and around union of interests. So in the, if you look at the history of the other states where you've seen efforts of consolidation, or even places like, for example, in Denver, uh, Denver never actually went through a consolidation. It created a metro council of mayors, and these mayors voluntarily aligned their interests around issues like, for example, you know, if a, a firm of some note approached the city and said it wanted to relocate, there was an orderly way that you approached them.
Denver and the cities who won't play off each other and won't race to the bottom, by the way, of incentives and taxation and you know, land deals and the like and equity investments directly. And if you do, you get thrown out of Metro Council. And there's a benefit for being in the Denver Metro Council and then you're part of a much larger collective region, approximately the same size, by the way, in Metro scale as St. Louis. Uh, so in that case, it's uh, an instance where, in the case of Denver Metro, you've not actually gone through the formal governance process of transformation into an entity, a common tax entity, or common, a common administered entity. Rather, you have a voluntary structure where what were once cities that saw separate interests and pursued separate goals have decided to create a unified voluntary structure on their own without seeking approval from you know, the state capital. There are other, insta other instances where that, that process has led to a formalization, like in the Louisville integration, where the city and county were talking, but then there was enough sense of common interest to produce an outcome where you, know, you had to affirm by a state legislature to produce a, a tax area that's the case in the, in the Minneapolis metropolitan area, again, another place where I think uh, you, know, you look for uh, good examples of, of regional government where there was a sharing across municipalities for purposes of school taxation with less affluent communities being recipients and more affluent communities being uh, donors. But the idea was that the region had attracted common sets of regional assets and that the entire metropolitan area was participatory in the workforce in those assets and was the common home in those assets. And so there was an incentive to try to ensure that there was at least some basic platform of investment in even a lower capacity tax area, a poorer city, say, as opposed to an affluent suburb, and that it wasn't that you, know, you had a sort of separation of interests, you had a, a kind of identity with the larger labor pool demands, the larger workforce development plans of the, the big uh, firms in Minneapolis were all behind this. So I'd say that the, the key couple of lessons to wrap uh, in this process are that, uh, you know, one, this is a region that does have uh, a lot of local government. In Pittsburgh is another case where we have a lot of local government as part of a few cities that are at the top 10 in that kind of presentation of governance. Uh, the process for you know, unity of these interests starts ahead of the formalized government uh, confirmation of that organic engagement. It starts with people talking. It starts with people saying, despite the fact that right now we have what look to be separate yeah. administrative spaces, if you look at the larger picture, this region, this metropolitan area, is the intersection point of the U.S. and global economies. And so anything that's within this region is a common asset because of community, because of employment, because of you know family, because of everything. And we think it's better that we talk. In the case of Denver, the, the crisis that emerged is that Denver was on a good roll for a couple of decades after World War II, and then uh, it over invested in energy at the wrong time in the early 80s, it went bust, and the region was so uh, you know, back on its heels, if you will, at the moment, uh, that it, re it required a kind of rethinking of where, the, where it stood. In the case of Pittsburgh, I think it's similar. If you have you know, catastrophic loss of a single sector like steel or energy, there's an incentive, there's a discipline to that moment where people begin talking and say, we can all sing together, or we can all rise together. And then, later on, if there's enough commitment, engagement, and common interest, you know, it, a, a formal switch in governance has been the pattern. But again, if the seeds of this are often years ahead of the, the switch, finally, I'll wrap up this one example. I mean, New York City is the first really large-scale municipal consolidation in 1898. And what it is, Manhattan stood alone, and it was about to get surpassed by, it turned out, Chicago. And the civic leadership of Manhattan said, New York has to remain the biggest city. But Brooklyn had other ideas. But what happened there in Brooklyn, so Brooklyn had to vote, and it was voted. And it passed in Queens, and it passed in Brooklyn. They were counties outside of New York. And the reason it passed was something more